Okay, this is Jason, and I'm back. Today, I'm going to be painting this model. This is a possessed dwarf by the company Alternative Armies. You can see I've primered him white. I'm going to show you another one from the set made by the same company that I already painted earlier. This guy's in a great pose, flying around some maces with fire on him. Fun model to paint. And Alternative Armies makes a whole little uh, pack of 13 of these different guys. They're pretty fun. And and women. You can get um, a woman possessed dwarf to get some heads. You can swap them around. Anyway, I'm going to paint the other guy to look a lot like this guy. I'm going to show you all the paints I'm going to use. For the red parts, I'm going to be using Delta Creative Tomp Day Red. Nice, good value color there. For the bronze bits, I will be using Deco Art Warren Penny. For the other metallic spots, some gunmetal gray, full cart, good value paints there. And then for the yellow, the fire. I'm going to be using this Citadel Flash Gets Yellow. And then for the orange, this Contrast Griff Hound Orange, also by Citadel. And finally, I'm going to be using this Contrast Skeleton Horde. And you can see in the back there, I got all my feral cultists I've been chipping away at, working on little by little. If you're interested in painting those models, I have another video out there. Okay, so I'm going to get organized for a few minutes, and then I'll be back to get started on this Possessed Dwarf. First things first, I'm going to do the red parts. And it's kind of nice, or I shouldn't say it's nice. It's a good idea when you're painting to start at the most innermost parts of the model to be painted and then working your way outward. And that's not always a perfect science, but kind of a good mindset. At least it's worked for me. So I'm making all his skin red. I had to sit and stare at this model for a minute because it is not as straightforward as you might think because all these models are in different poses. You know, sometimes you're looking at a model and you're like, okay, I'm going to paint all these guys to look kind of the same. Well, all the dwarves in this dwarf band have a little bit different armor and parts of their skin showing. I was also looking around online. You can find some nice examples. I think even on the Alternative Army's website of painted versions of these models. They're, they're not harder than any other model, honestly. But uh, because they're all kind of diverse, they present um, a different kind of challenge. But hey, it's, it's a good challenge. So um, I was like, man, I really want these guys to look, you know, demonic. So no better way to do that than to make their skin red. All right. Well, I'm going to work on this for a few minutes. And you kind of get the idea, seeing the parts I've done. And I'm going to paint his other arm, some parts on his leg. Then... I will return. Take a look here. Got the red part painted on there, right in between, uh, like by his legs there, by his crotch. Getting the red paint in there. That's a good example of why you want to um, do those inner more parts first, because then you can make mistakes, get paint around the edges, and you know you're going to paint it with the next layer. There he is on the back. Looking pretty good. So next I'm going to do the bronze. 
I also forgot, I am going to paint his boots another color. I think I'm going to use, uh, let's see, I'm going to probably use this color, paint his boots. So that's a minor detail, but uh, for now I'm going to get out my bronze, worn penny, and paint on some of these bronze parts. I'm thinking his shoulder pads. That's what they really are. And painting a little model like this, it might seem like you're doing a lot of work painting a bunch of details, but you know, there's no backpack. There's no separate arms. The entire model is right here. That means there's honestly not that much surface area. Somehow that makes it easier for me to justify in my mind taking a little extra time to get some of these other details picked out. Spending a little more time because this one little model it really doesn't take that long to paint. This piece around the back of his head or his neck. I just decided I want that bronze too. All right. So these skull knee pads. Funny skulls, I, I go back and forth depending on the model. Painting them to look like real skulls using kind of a bone color. Or painting them bronze. I find I always go with one or the other. And then the last part is just this. I don't know if it's a little band that holds his beard together. I'm going to paint that bronze. And then all these little straps and I'm going to paint those metallic. I'm going to paint his boots leather. And I'm going to do the fire. So I'm going to let him dry just for a minute or two. I am going to do the gunmetal color. And I think one of the important lessons for painting something like straps is you look at them and at least in my mind, I tend to think about them as these two dimensional sort of parts of the model. But in actuality, like uh, they're three dimensional because they have a, they have an edge. That's really hard to see. Maybe there you can see it. So sometimes I I try to paint the edge. I'm going to concentrate a little bit to do that, but it's not too hard. And um, if you do that, a lot of times it makes the model look a lot better. <laughs> Just one of those things, and it, it's really um, one of those things that looks a lot harder than it is. It's really just, see, I can brace my hand against my other hand. That way, if one hand shakes, the other hand shakes a tiny bit. And you do have to concentrate a little bit, but it's uh, something you get better at pretty quickly. All right, I'll paint his nugget pouch thing. How's that? Okay. Do those two straps. Maybe his faceplate. Helmet thing. A lot of times I'm 
I'm kind of like outlining stuff. So I'm just probably should have done his eyes before doing this part, but it just means I'll have something to touch up because I can say there's no way I'm going to paint his eyes perfectly the first time. <laughs> Gonna make the eyes yellow. So sometimes you can just get your brush to kind of just kiss the edge of the line, and that will the few of the bristles kind of push over the side. And that's enough to paint the edge. I don't know. Okay, so and there's always this urge to try to do it all perfect. It's never going to be perfect. Don't worry about that. One of the nice things is when you paint that wash on as one of the final steps, it's going to clean up a lot of your little errors. That is the beauty of wash. Okay, so there's the silver parts. Take another glance. In fact, I think I might do the eyes next. Hmm. Yeah, looking pretty good. And now I'll probably uh, do the leather parts so you know what I, I just decided I'm gonna paint his belt it's kind of got a wrestler outfit thing going on there <laughs> kind of hilarious what do people wear in hell well right when you get to the the gates they they hand you a sweet harness <laughs> so you can look like you're a wrestler. In life, you made terrible choices. In hell, you will wear a wrestling outfit. All righty, pretty good. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to paint those eyes real quick as soon as that has a chance to dry for a minute. don't want to take any chances on having that silver be a little wet when I paint those eyes. For these eyes, I'm going to use this little sharper brush. Getting on my flash gets yellow. And... Give this a shot. This is one of those things that used to make me so nervous to do. It's really... Oh, that looks pretty good. All right. Really not that hard, but it takes a little bit of getting used to. I think it's just a confidence thing. Well, dun, dun, dun. I will touch that up a tiny bit with some silver around the outside of it, but um, overall, good enough. I also noticed this area, sort of a painter's no man's land in there. I don't know what that's supposed to be, but... 
Got to paint it something. Huh. It's funny, from one angle the eye looks really good to me, and from another angle it doesn't. Anyway, I don't think I'm going to do too much more with it. I think it's going to look fine when I put some wash on it. So, next, I'm going to do that Griffhound Orange for the fire parts. This contrast paint. And should be pretty easy. I'm also going to make the beard this color, but I'm not going to make the beard on fire. So I kind of brush on some yellow after I do this part. And, uh, I'm not going to do that part to the beard. I'm going to maybe put some of the wash on the beard. I don't know yet. Might just be good to leave it with just orange. I like the idea of this dwarf who's possessed and he's got fire for his hair. And he's got a red beard. Paint goes on so smoothly, easily. I like how it tends to flow into the cracks a little bit. Painting a part like this, it really couldn't get easier. All right, when I add some yellow to that, it's gonna look great. So the contrast paint does tend to take a little longer to dry. In fact, I heard some people complain about that. For me, I don't find it to be too much of an issue, but you gotta let the thing sit, not mess with it for a little bit. So that's what I'm gonna do. After all that talk, I forgot to paint his beard. Well, I'm going to do the leather bits uh, with the snake bite leather contrast, and then I'm going to add that beard. And then I should be done with the base coats. It's funny, sometimes I realize I'm holding my breath while I paint. it like helps me to be more still or something like that I really like certain contrast paints this snake bite leather is one of them Feel like it really takes away excuse me the steps of having to do a, a brown layer and then a wash I, f I feel like it does all that in one so it's it's pretty useful in fact I'm finding a use for all the contrast paints I have they have been a really fun addition to my paint line, something that, um, you know, hasn't been something new like that for me for a little while.
but I still like all my old paints too. They don't, they didn't really, it's not like I quit buying another paint because now I have contrast. I, I, I still keep around all the ones, you know, all the tools I've used over the years. It's got this funny diaper thing. This wrestling diaper. All right. Well, there's that. I'm going to do his beard real quick. Wash the brush off. Get out that Griffhound orange again. Then I really will just have two steps left. One is to do the fire. Add the yellow to the fire. The other is to add some of that. Um, add a wash. You use it like a wash. So there's his beard. Done. I'm going to use this skeleton hoard as a wash. Skeleton Horde contrast paint. It's kind of a light contrast paint. I'm going to hit all the metal and the skin bits with it. And that part will be done. So um, I'm going to let the, the boots and that part dry for a few minutes. Well, I see a couple spots I missed. I, mean, I may touch up with a little bit. A little bit of bronze. Okay, that's always important to do. Um, I'm not going to film it, but I am going to look over the whole model and maybe touch up a little, a few little parts here and there. So what I'm going to do on the hair, or the fire hair, it's not really dry brushing, but it's kind of like a heavy dry brush, I guess. I'm gonna, just going to bring my paintbrush like against the the waves of fire so uh going across i guess the tops uh the more raised part of the fire like this kind of just catch the top of everything to kind of add a little yellow so put some yellow on the brush wipe it off can't really mess this up. I mean, fire wants to be yellow. Pretty cool. Orange and yellow just really go together. Oh, I need more. There we go. <clears throat> yeah, it's always kind of a challenge when you have part of a model that, you know, like fire is never stagnant or still like uh, like it is on a model. So you got to try to bring a little life to it. And getting layers of color is one of the ways to do that. One of the first ways I figured out what you can do with layers of color is when I was painting cigars on, on some models 
and uh, I was trying to do the layers of orange and white and red to make the cigar look like it was really lit up. I really spent a lot of time on it. Now I don't, I'm not spending that much time on this, but uh, I think it looks pretty good. The contrast paints help a lot to make it look like it's really on fire there. So next, I'm going to do the skeleton horde color. Clean my brush off a little bit, put the yellow away. Shake up the skeleton horde. I kind of messed up the cap on this bottle. Surprise, surprise. Okay, and I'm going to be pretty liberal with this stuff. In fact, I'm going to get a different brush. <clears throat> A bit bigger brush. It's nice. You can get this around the base of everything that you're not using it on, like around the base of the helmet. Just paint it right over his eyes, right over his red teeth. Hopefully, it'll frame the make those teeth look good. See, I'll just leave a big old glob of paint or. It's not really a glob when it's contrast paint, but I'll leave a lot of it right in there with his teeth. Hoping it'll dry and outline some of those things for me. Make sure I get his fingers. All the parts you want to be outlined. Don't worry about getting it on like a little bit on the fire or a little bit on the boots or anywhere else. It's really going to be fine. And when it dries, it will not be quite so dark. You can just kind of and if you got too much in there, just kind of use your brush and suck a little bit of it back up. The Skeleton Horde is the lightest of the contrast paints that I have. And I find it's kind of pretty diverse as a wash. I've even had to like give a couple Passover Passovers with it. <clears throat> Cause it, it is dried lighter than I expected. But I really went crazy with it here, so anyway I think that'll be good. Still wet, obviously. I'm going to let it dry. We'll see how it turned out. Well, there he is. Looks pretty good. All done. I'll give him a little spray of some satin coat. Protect him, but uh, other than that, calling it good. All right, have a great night.